Today on the newscast, Joseph's tomb in the biblical heartland of Samaria vandalized twice in recent days by Palestinian rioters as a terror wave against Israel continues. Get all the breaking details next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast, a very tense weekend in Israel amid this ongoing terror wave that has left 14 Israelis dead in recent weeks. Now, the latest attack, of course, we covered it here on the newscast on Friday, was the Tel Aviv terror attack on Thursday, April 7th, left three Israelis dead, including a former Israeli Olympic athlete murdered in cold blood on the streets of Tel Aviv in a popular nightlife area. A bunch of bars and restaurants there. They were mowed down by a Palestinian terrorist, a 28-year-old man who was later killed by Israeli security services. But these were the 12th, 13th, and 14th victims in this ongoing terror wave. Some of the terror has been carried out by Palestinians. Uh, Other portions of it carried out by Israeli Arabs who live inside Israel proper who were inspired by ISIS. But this wave seems to be going in the direction more and more of Palestinian-driven terror and violence against Israeli Jews and all cheerleaded by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the two Iranian proxies. Now, the shootings, the car rammings, the stabbings, that is one ugly portion of this terror wave. Now Hamas and Islamic Jihad obviously excel at violence and bloodshed, but they're also very adept at incitement to violence. And we may have seen a good example of that over the weekend uh, in Nablus, the Palestinian city, which was known as Shechem in the Bible. That is the place where Joseph is buried, the biblical hero Joseph, the son of Jacob, From the book of Genesis, he wanted to be buried in Shechem as described in the book of Genesis and his tomb, which lays outside of that city, again, known today as Nablus and controlled by Palestinians, is a site of pilgrimage for Jews in particular. Many Israelis go there, but only once a month are they permitted and they must do so under armed escort along with the Israel Defense Forces, and every time they visit, they are targeted by Palestinians. Now, there was not a Jew in sight over the weekend when, according to the Israel Defense Forces, at least 100 Palestinians stormed Joseph's tomb, defiled it, set it ablaze, and then the following day, at least one Palestinian man also stormed the tomb, no one stopped him, hurled rocks, and also defaced the site of Joseph's tomb. Now, There is a long track record here, and we'll get into it in a minute, of Palestinians targeting biblical sites that have great significance to both Christians and Jews. Obviously, we don't worship and revere the site, but nonetheless, these are places with great historical significance, which are mentioned in the Bible and are the final resting places, in many cases, of our biblical heroes. So yes, they do mean something, but Palestinians have targeted them again and again, And we'll give you an example, two examples actually, uh, in a minute. But real quick with the response from Israel, Israeli officials from Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, Defense Minister Benny Gantz, Foreign Minister Yair Lapid, they're all condemning these attacks against Joseph's tomb and these provocations. But at the end of the day, it is located today, Joseph's tomb, in an area that is controlled by the Palestinian Authority. So ultimately it seems... Uh, the responsibility for securing the site would lie with the Palestinians uh, or the Palestinian Authority in specific. Pardon me if I don't have too much hope that they're going to stop the continued onslaughts against Joseph's tomb. I mentioned the track record of these kinds of attacks. And again, folks, this comes at the beginning of Holy Week for Christians, and it comes as Passover is right around the corner for Jews beginning this Friday. Uh, Yet, this defilement comes of Joseph's tomb. And we talked about this last year, about a year ago, more than a year, February 2021, when Joshua's altar was also defaced by Palestinians. I've visited there. I filmed there for the Watchmen. That is also a place of great significance where Joshua built an altar as laid out in the Bible upon the Israelites entering the promised land. We talked about it here in the newscast. Just last Monday, one of the incredible archaeological discoveries found there recently, the 
ancient curse tablet found on Mount Ebal, where Joshua's altar is located. That was defaced. The Temple Mount, there's been things going on there. First things first, let's go to this clip from the Watchman newscast last February, where we talked about this Palestinian vandalism of Joshua's altar. Take a look. The site of Joshua's altar, which sits atop the biblical Mount Ebal in the Samaria region, was damaged this week by Palestinian Authority workers who were doing road work in the area. Now, the workers reportedly damaged the altar's exterior wall. They took ancient stones from the site and even ground some of the stones into gravel. The altar itself, thankfully, was not damaged. And according to the Jewish press website, some Israeli residents who live nearby in Samaria restored a portion of the wall on Thursday. But folks, this is a serious incident for a few reasons. Number one, Joshua's altar has major biblical significance. The book of Joshua describes how Moses commanded the Israelites to build an altar to the Lord once they crossed the Jordan River and entered the Promised Land. Joshua and the ancient Israelites made sacrifices to God there, and the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle stood on that very spot. Now, as you'll see in a minute, I've been to this site, and while there are varying opinions among archaeologists, I believe that this is the place. The second reason why we should care about it being damaged is that this was no accident. The Palestinian Authority of Mahmoud Abbas knows very well what this site represents, not only to Jews, of course, but also to Christians. Remember, we believe in the entire Bible front to back. The site has gotten a good amount of media coverage over the past few years, including on the Watchmen TV show on TBN, and Abbas and the PA don't like it because it proves, yet again, the Jewish people's ancient and ancestral presence in the land of Israel, starting with the biblical heartland of Judea and Samaria. The damage to Mount Ebal is part of a larger effort by the Palestinian Authority to erase Jewish history in Judea, Samaria, and Jerusalem, including on the Temple Mount. Now, I mentioned the Temple Mount there. Let's go now to the Temple Mount Sifting Project in Jerusalem and see how they are trying to salvage what Palestinians tried to destroy. There's no other way to describe it on the Temple Mount a few years ago. Take a look. The reason you're doing this, Yitzhak, why it's necessary, give us that quick background, what happened on the Temple Mount around 1999, I guess, about 20 years yeah. ago. Uh, right. Not good, tell us yeah. about it. So, uh, the Muslim authorities uh, excavated a, a huge pit in order to make an, a new entrance. Uh, actually, they converted an ancient structure called Solomon's Stables. It's a substructure. Uh, that was founded during the early Islamic period. On, on the, the Temple Mount? On the Temple Mount, in the southeastern corner of the Temple Mount, uh, on remains of the Second Temple period. In that location, a huge underground vaulted structure was built later on, and, uh, and the Crusaders were the last to use it as stables for the horses. And it was out of use during 1,000 years, and then they converted that to a, a, a mosque. They changed the status quo on the Temple Mount. So 400 truckloads of dirt were removed from sacred ground, the, the Temple Mount. Yeah. Uh, where 3,000 years ago Solomon's Temple stood. Yeah. Who knows what's under that dirt? The Muslim yeah. authorities took them from the Temple Mount and just dumped them in the Kidron Valley and, and elsewhere here in Jerusalem. Unbelievable. Yitzhak, I think people at home will be shocked to learn how, how they did this, why they were allowed to do it. I was That's, shocked. Many people were shocked. Yeah. But uh, I was very interested uh, because I was an archaeological student, third year, and uh, I went with uh, another friend and we started uh, surveying it. Gabriel Barkai, one of my uh, lecturers in those, those days, a sure. senior archaeologist in Israel, very famous archaeologist, uh, he joined forces with me and together it took us about three years until we got the permit to do this. Yeah. There were many obstacles and in yeah. 2004, we began the sifting project. Thanks again to the Temple Mount Sifting Project for the great work they are doing in Jerusalem. Quick side note, Joshua's altar, which you saw there in the first clip, when our watchman team visited that site, we went with an armed escort from the Israel Defense Forces that is also in a Palestinian Authority controlled area known as Area B. We know it as the biblical heartland of Samaria, but nonetheless, Palestinians oversee the site of Joshua's altar and Joseph's tomb. Hey, we'll be monitoring this very closely for you in the days to come. Easter right around the corner, of course. We're in the midst of Holy Week. Passover right around the corner as well. 
We're also in the middle of Ramadan, the Muslim holiday, and Hamas and Islamic Jihad have called for more attacks against Israel during this Muslim holiday. So tense times for sure in God's land. Keep the people of Israel in your prayers for such a time as this. I'll be heading back soon to the Holy Land. More details to come on that in the days to come as well. Hey, in the meantime, be sure to check out our Watchmen live stream this Wednesday, April 13th. Wow, already almost mid-April, April 13th, right here in the newscast. Join us live here from 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Be sure to bring your questions for our Q&A session. It's going to be good. Until tomorrow, thanks for mu- so much for joining us here in the Watchmen newscast. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.